Hey, this is Lady C. I want to welcome you all to The Critical Thought. If this is your first time here, we want to welcome you to our channel. So in this upcoming episode, JT is going to break it down to you, showing you how nobody does hypocrisy, quite like the Watchtower. You're listening to The Critical Thought, where we challenge our listeners to use critical thinking when examining the teachings of Jehovah's Witnesses. If there's one thing we have all learned over the years, there's nothing like the Watchtower. It's the gift that keeps on giving, and of course, with their special characters, we get even better gifts. You know, Tony Morris got his new home, and when I heard about this, I was like, this is interesting, especially when you get a chance to see the documents. Oh my God. Goodness, can you believe what is on the documents? His house costs about a quarter of a million dollars. He's in a little place called Lumberton, North Carolina, which is actually about one circuit over from where I grew up at. But you know, it's interesting because if you look at the house, his house is brand new. Think about this. Think about all the witnesses around the world who have homes. Homes they could have rented to Tony. Homes they could have donated to Tony. They didn't even ask. They just went into the coffers and spent the money. Now, why is this so ironic? Well, I want you to stop and think about this. Our channel focuses on the need to think critically. Look at this document and look carefully. This has got to be the ultimate slap in the face. It's got to be the ultimate spit in the face. Look at it very carefully. What do you see? Look at it. That's right. You're looking at the religious order of Jehovah's Witnesses. This is the same religious order that kicked out over a thousand Bethelites. The Watchtower has thousands, I mean thousands, of corporations that they've set up over the years. And which one do they decide to use to buy Tony's house? The religious order. Yes, the same religious order corporation that kicked out over a thousand Bethelites without a dime. They didn't even give these guys five dollars. If you took just the money that they spent on Tony's house, they could have gave every Bethelite $250. That's right, $250. Uh, Brother Davis, this is $250 for your 25 years of service here at Bethel, the house of God. They didn't give these guys a dime. When they left Bethel, every Bethelite who was kicked out knew that once you leave, you better not be heard from anybody talking bad about how you were treated. You know, it's really sad because the organization actually could have done a lot, but the organization doesn't care. Think about this. They could have set up a contribution box right at the back of the Kingdom Hall. The personnel department could have simply walked right down the hall went into the writing department and says, look, we need y'all guys to put together a nice little article. You know, we're going to let some Bethelites go. We need you to put together an article about the Levites serving at the temple. We need you to do a little anti-type like we've always done. We're good at doing anti-types. Make a little, get some, throw some scriptures in there and parallel it with the Bethelites working at the house of God, Bethel. And now let the friends know that they had been reassigned by Jehovah. And if they've been reassigned by Jehovah and they're coming to your congregation, then we want you brothers to help these guys and women get on their feet and get situated. They could have have told the writing department, put together a study article, fold it right into the study article. Then walked right over to the service department, told the guys in service, look, we need you guys to put together a nice little letter. Put a letter, send it to the body of elders and have the elders read it to the congregation. Explain to them that Jehovah God is moving forward. His chariot is moving. And what we need you to do is they've been reassigned. These are an assignment from Jehovah. Every Jehovah's Witness knows everything is always called a privilege. Well, all they had to do was tell the service department, put something in the letter real nice about their privileges are being extended to your congregation. And when these people left, they could have helped these people get situated, but they didn't. Some of you may remember Jack, our friend from Canada, who shared with us about when they were trying to put together a Kingdom Hall fund. They raised like $80,000 and they had the branch office keep the money. The branch office is going to hold the money. And because they couldn't get the full amount that was required, the branch wouldn't even send them their money back. Back in Poland, we were still meeting in somebody's garage. And 
there was huge need for a kingdom hall, right? The brothers were like begging, like donations. We got to build a kingdom hall. We got to build a kingdom hall. Mm -hmm. uh, so at one point, they're like, okay, <clears throat> we passed the resolution. You know, everybody fills out those little cards, right? Put in the hat, right? Let's see how much money we can get. And they said, okay, you know, we now we have to actually start putting the donations. And if we have enough donations, right, then we can borrow money. You know, the, the mortgage of zero percent from uh, from Bethel, and we'll we'll buy a kingdom hall. Well, it, it was literally the announcements were made every meeting, three times a week back then. Right, donations, donations, donations. If we don't meet the quota, that we're not gonna get the loan. So please, brother. Elders were calling people at home. Yeah. Like, oh, you didn't come to the meeting, but we were wondering, right? Can we help you? Maybe you're sick, but oh, if you're not, can you donate? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it was crazy. And, and I was like, I was just like 14 years old. And I was thinking, there is no way we can buy this kingdom hall. There's just no way. It's a congregation of 80 people, 50 people show up. Most of them are elderly. Okay. And some students like me, there's no way we can contribute the amount of money they're asking from us. Right. Yeah. But of course, with Holy Spirit in Jehovah's hand, it will be done. Everybody stretched themselves, okay? Donate, donate, including us. Like we were donating our, you know, monthly allowance as teenagers. And then, <clears throat> then we got the letter saying, sorry, not enough. We don't give you the loan. Wow. Well, what do you think is going to happen with the money? They're not going to give it back to the publishers. <laughs> Of course not. How are you going to give it back to the You don't even know who, who, who did everything went into the box. How do you know? Oh, my God. So what do you do with the money? It, JT, what happens if you have too much money in a congregation? <laughs> you got to sit. You got to sit. <laughs> oh, you better stop it. Oh, man, you lying, man. You lying. <laughs> exactly. Come who refused on. to give us the loan? Worse. Worse. Oh God. oh God! They came. They came a brother from Bethel to our congregation, and they're like, "Oh, a, Beth, a brother from Bethel came. He's got to give a talk, right?" So he gives a talk, and he's responsible for the garden. And he brought pictures, right? How they built this huge waterfall. They imported some huge rocks. I mean, it's a masterpiece. He end up on the magazines in Warsaw, right? Like. This place is gorgeous. gorgeous. He says the price for this waterfall was 200000 That's the exact amount we were asking for a loan. Oh. And we're like, Ooh. we're supposed to be happy? Yeah. And we're freezing in somebody's uh, uh, garage. garage. And, the, and the brother who's lending the garage, he's crying because instead of people giving him money for heating the place, they were all contributing for the Kingdom Hall that never yeah, happened. You get out of here. And I was like, I and I'm the only one that sees that our money was stolen. They had little notes and, and memos of who gave money. Everybody knew how much they gave, and they were just refunding it back to the friend and give them a dime back. That money, of course, was gonna be needed down the road one day for people like Tony. You know, Tony Morris left Bethel on the cloud. Those Bethelites who they kicked out. Those guys and girls, they didn't, they didn't leave us under the cloud. They were kicked out. Tony left under the cloud. But of course, we all know Tony knows where the bodies are buried. And they weren't going to make the same mistake they made with Raymond Franz. They only gave Raymond Franz about $10,000. They knew we're not going to make the same mistake. And they bought this man a house. Now, we all know that Tony Morris is part of the Morris tobacco family. Now, we don't know if he was written in the will or not. So we don't know what kind of inheritance he has. But I want you to stop and think about this. I was, you know, I was thinking about myself. When I was at Bethel, um, the friends would oftentimes give us money. You know, you go to somewhere, you visit someone, and the friends give you what we call the green handshake. And with the little green handshake, what I would do, friends give me $10, $20, I would save it. Bethel had like a little bank at Bethel. It was like a little, little, little financial institution at Bethel where you could keep your money. And I would put my money in there so that I would be able to have money down the road. So I cannot imagine over the last 10, 20, 30 years in the circuit work, both at Bethel as a member of the governing body, how many green handshakes did Tony get? How much money did Tony set aside? And yet the Watchtower reached into the coffers without letting anybody know. And they reached into the coffers of the, the religious order. Yes, the same order that kicked everybody else. 
and they spent this money on this man. As we've often said, nobody, I mean nobody, does hypocrisy quite like the Watchtower. They got it down to a science. So when we get a chance to see documents like this, it just really reconfirms for every one of us who left, we did the right thing. So once again, thanks for coming by. And this has been JT. This program was sponsored by Critical Thinkers.